After being attacked, going savage, being arrested, having its park being closed, Nick, understandably, gets sent to jail with the big dudes. While in jail, Nick is forced to wear a collar that gives twice as hard as shocks as the one from before. Everyone hated the collars, but specifically, Nick couldn't get over the pain that they caused him, and now he had to wear one that was a lot worse. Also, what was that all about? Why would a fellow predator hurt another fellow predator? That just makes it worse for everyone. Why would he do that? So Nick thinks to himself, you know what, I don't like the idea of being in prison for a crime that I was framed for. I'm going to escape. I don't know how Nick escaped, stop asking questions. But we can connect the dots. We know that Nick was in Judy's custody, and then Judy was the one chasing Nick. So maybe what I'm thinking is that Nick used Judy's humanity and kindness to escape, which does sound like something he'd do. Judy is alerted that Nick is escaping, so she begins to chase him. Everything is on the line for both of them. Her job and his freedom. He jumps from the top floor of the police station to get some distance between him and Judy. So Nick's freedom, well as free as he can be, is still being constantly threatened by Judy. So he decides to do something, and you're gonna love this, he goes inside the Robotent City, where in the final film, Judy chases the whistle. Yes, Judy chasing the whistle was originally going to be Nick. I think that's really cool. But in this version of the movie, the one who's been chased escapes, and the one who's chasing gets trapped in the donut. Which is news. Look, here's another storyboard. Let's read it. Shocking news this morning after Savage Fox Nicholas Wilde assaults Bunny Cub Judy Hobbs. Hey, get those cameras out of here! And rampages through Little Rodia. Needless to say, it isn't pretty. Oh, stupid fox coming out here and don't wait, does this even go? Oh, that's stupid. Squeak, 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 squeak. He had anger on his eyes and violins on his heart. Squeak. Violent. It's gonna take me a lot of toilet paper to rebuild my house. A lot. Muchísimo. Esto es terrible. Siguientemente los beneficios de los baños de polvo. ¿Y cómo te podrían matar? The show will go on. I do not fear an animal who was jailed because of his color. I fear a world in which he was required to wear one in the first place. And yes, I will be making a song about it. Yes, 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 save it for the Oasis. I have fun road seats. Of course I don't want her to cancel. And no, I will not be bringing in a sniffer squad. He's not some tiger. We are talking about a fox. Officer Hobbs, is it true he was in your custody? Sergeant Hobbs, and maybe you forgot, but she brought him in once. Our best teachers are our mistakes. For the record, the fudge you escape was my fault, and mine alone. This is not about finding a scapegoat or discovering a mole. And, if you are listening, Mr. Wild, there is no swamp you can swim to, nor hole you can hide in, that I will not find you. The bunny is coming. So Nick was like, rats, if I only had affiliations with a criminal mafia that could help me get out of this one. Wait a minute. So Nick goes to Russia to ask for Koslov's help, but then Judy comes out of nowhere, handcuffs herself to Nick, and says that Nick is under arrest. Unfortunately, she forgot about the size difference, so Nick just grabs Judy's own dart pistol, shoots her, and he's on his way. But Judy did handcuff herself to Nick, which means that he had to carry her unconscious body around, which is unfortunate. When Nick finally gets to Koslov's, he thinks to himself, man, I gotta do something about this unconscious body. But then Judy wakes up and hides in a hide that Nick was... I don't... He, he hides in a hat. When Koslov finally lets Nick in, he sees his orange outfit and that he's in distress, so he asks him what happened. Nick mentions the story and says that he's now a fugitive and that he's in a hurry. First thing he needs is to know about a wolf, a wolf that could shoot him. Koslov recognizes the wolf, but refuses to speak because it's too scary. Then Judy pops out of the hat and it threatens to arrest Koslov. Now Judy is a cop, a prey cop, that got into Koslov's because she was in a hat that Nick was wearing. Koslov feels betrayed, so he sentenced Nick to be iced. And Judy is a cop that's in Koslov's, so she gets iced too. And here comes another scene. Can we please just find a way out? Oh, I did. For me. See you later, sucker. Ha <laughs> ha! This is not my day. 
You ran their plates? Did you get an address? Did you get an address? It doesn't matter. You are going back to the station. I'm going back to the station. I am never getting my life back. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Shh. Why? Shh. Now. Okay. Okay. Okay! Where is Morris? Morris! Oh boy, come up what here, is please. This? Just Where keep are going. you? Come on, come on. Today, my little Morris is no longer a cub. Today, he becomes a big bear. That is right. A big, a big bear. Is this, is this a taming party? <gasps> With this color, Zootopia welcomes you. With this color, Zootopia welcomes me. With this color, Zootopia celebrates you. With this color, Zootopia celebrates me. With this color, Zootopia accepts you. With this color, Zootopia accepts me. What's wrong, Papa? Nothing. Papa is just happy for you. Thank you, Papa. Morris. Morris! <gasps> Go. We have to move on. So they are trying to leave, they get attacked, and well, I don't really know. There's this scene that is from probably an earlier, earlier version of the plot where they're trying to escape, but Judy is also a fugitive. I don't know what she did, but uh, I'm gonna leave that scene in the description if you wanna see it. So for now, we're gonna stick to another thing that probably happened, which I recall reading somewhere, which is that Judy gets hit by the dart, and Nick is gonna use that as an opportunity to escape, but then he decides not to, he decides to save Judy, because he's a predator, he's not a monster. Those are two different things. And then he skittles away in a snowmobile, frick yeah! So Nick goes to Tundra Town and finds a safe place, and once Judy wakes up, they kinda exchange information, and Judy probably realizes that the wolf is a real thing, and that it wasn't Nick's fault that he went savage. And Nick probably used this opportunity to tell Judy how dumb it was to get themselves caught, because let's be honest, it was probably Judy's fault that they got caught and sentenced to death. She probably came out of the hat and threatened to arrest Koslov. And just like in the final film, they both realize that this is a lot bigger than them, so they decide to team up to get the wolf. And remember how is that Judy wrote the plates down? She did get an address. It was Mr. Mancha's address. So they go pay him a visit. When they finally show up, at first he's hesitant to let them in. Because Judy is a police prey in a police state run by prey. But Nick tells Mr. Mancha that she's cool, that she's with him. And that they're actually doing something that's gonna be really beneficial for our predators. But what do these fox words mean without any proof? So Nick convinces Judy to take off Mr. Manchester's collar. Mr. Manchester, they turned out to be super helpful. He said he was a cab driver, and that he was driving a wolf around the city, and he drove him to many places, but a place that he kept coming back to is the Palm Hotel, which he probably was staying at. Unfortunately, he got shot by the wolf because he was giving away way too much information. And because he didn't have his tame collar on, he went insane almost immediately. He started chasing Nick and Judy, who tried to run away, but were no match for a jower. Mr. Manchester hit Nick in the back, which triggered his shock collar because of the shock that he had because he got hit in the back. 
So Nick fell off the deck into a river. Judy tried to save them, but she too fell because of weight and stuff. And when they were both trying to swim for their life, they noticed that there was a waterfall in front of them. And they tried to do everything, but at this point, they were past the point of no return. And they both ended up falling and...